Yes, I'm back. <coughs> so, we learnt about some of the functions performed by the blood. Before we continue further, yes, Goss, how are you? Before we continue further, okay, uh, you guys will be telling me about the functions performed by the blood. What functions do they perform? What are the functions performed by the blood? That is the question. One after one by one, you guys will be answering this. Yes, one of you start. Sir, uh, <coughs> uh, the function of blood is to uh, so transport oxygen and nutrients to all the part of the body and remove uh, waste. Very good. Well then, you guys also mentioned some more functions performed by it. Your answer could be same, but uh, so, but continue. Hmm. So protection. Um. Uh, uh, when when there's a wound, when there's a wound in your body, uh, the blood uh, the blood clots to um, uh, prevent blood loss in the body. Very good, very good. And there is one more thing, <clears throat> Priyanka. Yes. Like as you guys have mentioned, yeah. Um, the nutrition, transporting oxygen and nutrition to the lungs and bodies. I mean tissues. Not one important function you guys haven't answered. It was the regulation of the body temperature also. Okay, now was all of you turn your cameras on in the class. This is such a basic thing and I don't like repeating this basic information again and again. So what we learned about the blood. <coughs> blood is a kind of connective tissue. It is a connective tissue that is circulating in our body. It is circulating into the vein, into the arteries and it transports oxygens waters, minerals, and all the necessary nutrients to the cells, and it removes the waste product from the cells. That is what blood is now. So we see that it is a red fluid that flows through the body's circulatory system that flows through the body's nerves. Okay, no? So that circulates Through the through the uh, through the veins and arteries, arteries and transports oxygen and important nutrients to the cells and removes waste from the cell removes waste from cell. Now, you guys think about this, like what kind of waste the blood will be removing from the cell? What kind of waste it will remove from the cell? Hmm? You guys have learned about respiration, right? Yes. What happens in respiration? <clears throat> it is a chemical breakdown of food. Chemical breakdown of food, food. And what are the waste product release in respiration? Energy is the energy is produced. Okay. Apart from that, what is the waste product produced in respiration? <clears throat> is there some gaseous waste in process of uh, respiration? Yeah, Abu Bakr, Priyanka, and Gauss. <clears throat> Isn't there some gases waste by the name of carbon dioxide, right? Isn't it? So carbon dioxide is a waste material produced in the cells while respiration takes place. Yes, Prinka, you forgot about this? Yeah. 
so it will be removing that waste material apart from that in certain cases lactic acid will be produced in the cells now so lactic acid is a waste material urea will be the waste material urea is a waste material so the blood will be taking away the waste materials like urea like carbon dioxide or lactic acid from the cells okay no that is one thing in certain situations the medicines that we take in the medicines that we take in so the that medicines will also end up sometimes as a waste product in our cells okay no suppose you you take some medicines it's not like the 100% of the medicine is utilized by the body 100% of the medicine does not get dissolved and does not get utilized by the body so thereby excessive consumption of medicine is not recommended okay one should go for the natural means to cure themselves first if the disease is, is not serious it is usually recommended to not take the medicine go for the natural remedies nonetheless in this discussion what i said we have learned about some of the uh, waste in the cell wastes produced in cell they were namely carbon dioxide <laughs> i am writing it in short the chemical formula of carbon dioxide is capital c small o and 2 at the base of 2 uh small o and and 2 at the base of o then you have other waste like urea and lactic acid so these are the waste that will be taken up by the blood from the cells sir yes Today I have some network issues. अच्छा, okay, okay, that is the case. Okay, <coughs> you can do one thing. Okay, uh, if you have questions, uh, you can raise your hand or write down the questions in the chat box. Or wherever you won't be getting the concepts, just raise your hand. Okay. Okay, sir. Also, do tell me, uh, you are using the Wi-Fi network or a mobile network? Sir, actually, I shifted my house. Uh, okay, okay. So I'm connected to mobile. Okay, that is the problem then. Okay, no. Yes. Ah, uh, that's why it's a problem. So you are still in Kerala now, or like you shifted to other state? Sir, I'm. I came back to Bahrain. Oh, okay. that is one thing further we learned that it is called as a connective tissue also we learned the reason why it is called as connective tissue as it will be connecting the different systems of the body hence it is called as the connective tissue further talking about its functions so some of the important functions which we discussed in the previous class and some of you have mentioned it so the basic function it performs is transportation transportation of what transportation of oxygen water yeah nutrients so that is one thing apart from that uh, like it will be transporting it to different parts of the body to different cells of the body apart from that it is having a protective function also so it is protection for like uh, it will be forming clot and thereby will prevent the loss of excess blood from the body further it does the function of regulation of body temperature also so it regulates the body temperature so which we have learned in the previous class how it will be regulating the body temperature yeah so you will get to know that <coughs> that usually in the winters or in the in the in the usually in the winters the flow of the blood will be more towards the vital and the important organs Right, our body will be focusing more on the vital organs to provide them with all the necessary requirements. So the blood flow on the uh, on the flow of the blood close to the surface of the skin will be reduced. That's why your hand will not be very warm. In the in the case of the uh, wind, uh, summer opposite take opposite happens. As we know, we are the warm blooded animals. So if the surrounding temperature increases, we can lose our body temperature you, we can lose get rid of the excessive heat by uh, by sweating why sweating takes place in the summer season why sweating is more and why there is no sweating in the winter because in the summer season usually we know that we are the warm blooded animals so what happens that the flow of the blood 
in the blood vessels that are close to our skin will increase and hence it will release the heat into the environment and thereby will be able to regulate our body temperature. So blood is helping in this. Isn't it cause Priyanka and Abhupakar? So these are some of the things which we have learned in previous classes. Today we'd be learning about the <coughs> we'd be learning about the components of the blood. What are the different components present in the blood? Now, if you were to take just a drop of blood now, if you were to take a just a drop of blood, so there are about two million red blood cells in just one drop of blood, right? How much? Just about two million red blood cells. Red blood cell is one of the components present in our blood. Apart from that, we have the white blood cells, we have platelets, and we have so many other components also. But the major components are these three. The first one I have mentioned, it is red blood cell. Then you have the white blood cell. Then you have the platelets. Red blood cells are also called as erythrocytes. The another name for, used for this is the erythrocyte. Okay. For for the platelets, it is thrombocytes. Okay, now it is thrombocytes. So right now our discussion would be mainly about the components of the blood. So the topic <laughs> is the components of blood. So the first component is the RBCs. In, in short, it is RBC and the full form is the red blood cells. So the red blood cells will be uh, will contain a red pigment in it. It will contain a pigment in it called as hemoglobin, because of which the color of the red uh, of this these cells are red, and hence it is called as the red blood cells. And in fact, blood is red in color because of this red blood cells. And this red blood cell ten, cell contains a pigment called as hemoglobin. The word pigment, I suppose, all of you are familiar with this. You would have learned about pigments in the plants. Huh? Like chlorophyll is a pigment. So in the similar manner, there is a pigment in the red blood cells that is known by the name of hemoglobin. In short, we write this as capital H, small b. Moments ago, I said that in just one drop of blood, there is about 2 million red blood cells. There are about 2 million red blood cells. <coughs> so talking about the red blood cells, These cells contain hemoglobin, a red pigment, another thing is that this red pigment called as hemoglobin, it will help in carrying the oxygen in our blood. So hemoglobin. carries oxygen it will be carrying oxygen right now i'm just giving a general introduction introduction to these components later on we'll be learning about each of them in detail so hemoglobin will be carrying the oxygen and we will learn how it will carry the oxygen another component is the white blood cell okay now white blood cells and you can see that there are several types of white blood cells here the white blood cells they are of several types getting it up so like lymphocytes, monocytes, neutrophils, etc. The main function of the white blood cells will be to help fight the infection. It will help in fighting the infections. If a pathogen enters in the body, so the white blood cells, their production will increase and hence it will improve your immune system and it will fight off the infection. So another component we are having is the white blood cells. In short, it is WBC, small s. Its main function is to fight off the infection. Fight off the infection. <laughs> that is one thing. Then we have another component, platelet. You guys are already familiar with platelet, I suppose. In the previous class, in fact, we, uh, we learned a bit about this. As I was saying that, blood has several functions. One of it is protective function. So the blood will be forming the clot with the help of the platelets. So platelets will help in the formation of clot. Got this everyone? Platelet 
helps in clot formation helps in the formation of clot okay now another important thing to be discussed here all these cells that you are taking uh, that we are studying here all these cells where are they formed in our body all these cells are formed inside the bone marrow where is all the cells coming from where are they being uh, made in the bone marrow bone marrow is that thing clear to everyone yes sir by the way you guys understand the bone marrow now what is bone marrow yeah sir can you explain ha uh, sure when we look inside the bone of certain parts of the body from inside they are hollow okay na no? and in the center of the bone it will be filled with a soft and a spongy tissue it is filled with a soft and spongy tissue where the bodies uh, where the red blood cells where the white blood cells different kind of uh, cells in the of the blood namely red blood cells white blood cells and platelets are manufactured so it's the site of production of the different cells of the blood you guys just take a look at the bone here and that will give you the clarity about where exactly it is found <coughs> which is the longest bone in the body by the way femur and the shortest bone where is it present sir it's in the ear exactly can you name the different bones in the ear there are three bones in our ear when you look at the inner ear there are three small bones in the inner ear okay na they are hammer anvil and strip respectively okay na hammer anvil and strip this will help us to understand this thing to understand what we are really discussing here so when we look at the structure of this bone here from inside it is hollow inside it is hollow you guys look at this fluid this structure this is basically representing bone marrow getting it everyone now yes sir also you guys will see that many times we think that the bones are dead actually bones are not dead nerve cells are connected to the bones also blood vessels are connected to our bones also as you guys can see here vein and artery is connected all the way through this bone here got this guys so this is structure <laughs> inside the bone it is filled with bone marrow it is filled with bone marrow where the production of the different components of the cells of the uh, blood takes place so this is the bone marrow the soft spongy tissue so where is present present in the hollow bones what is its function produces cells. it yeah. produces cells exactly particularly red blood cells white blood cells and the platelets and the platelets okay have you guys ever heard about bone marrow donation have you ever heard about this no, certain sir. people certain people would be donating their bone marrow also although yes, very very less people choose to donate their bone marrow but one should opt to donate the bone marrow right now in this the bone marrow will be extracted from the bone here and a person who is having a, who is suffering from some disorder in their blood or in certain cancer patients also bone marrow is required okay now that's why you know like treatment of cancer is very expensive because the medicines are expensive plus the requirement <laughs> is also expensive okay also in india we know like in a population of 1 lakh na not even one people chooses to donate their uh, uh, organs after death right not even one person out of 1 lakh of population would be registering themselves for organ donation in fact registering oneself for organ donation is very simple 
you one just has to go to the government web, website they will be registering up their self uh, registering themselves there it is very simple that is only and you guys know like uh, when a person will die his organs will uh, uh, like uh, the organs of the person will save several lives the organs of a dead person can save several lives i think it can save as many as lives of about i think 5 to 10 people at least multiple organs can be donated liver both the kidneys pancreas lungs intestines all of these can be donated some of the organs should be donated Im immediately after the person is declared death because after that then it, it starts to decompose very fast not all the parts of the body starts to decompose at the same rate once a person dies okay na that is one thing Sir, uh, sir, uh, sir, the liver uh, can uh, regenerate itself, right? Exactly, liver can regenerate itself. Even if uh, uh, an alive person can uh, can donate their liver, and people donate their liver, okay, no, it regenerates itself. Very good. That is one thing. Okay. <laughs> Particularly, I think one should be. Uh, many there are many people who register themselves for the eye donation. Okay, no, but for the critical organs, I think. there are very less uh, person who would be opting out for that because the procedure for eye removal is very simple but for the procedure of removal of kidney and other organs the incision has to be made in the body and people usually don't opt for that okay let's get back to the topic then so we learned that these components of the blood are formed in the bone marrow now there are some other components also which we are learning but specifically we have learned about the three main cells present in the blood now we are going to learn about the concept of plasma so plasma it's basically the liquid component present in our blood that is majorly made up of the water and all the blood cells are fl floating in this okay now all of them are floating in this okay like for example some amount of blood has been taken here okay um <laughs> have you guys seen the centrifugation machine you guys know about centrifugation or not <laughs> like whenever we give our blood for blood test now the our, our blood will be put into a centrifugation machine it is a, a spinned at a very high speed and all the blood components get separated all of them will be getting separated so what we see now the red blood cells would be settling down at the bottom since it's heavier as compared to other components then there goes this leukocyte and thrombocyte basically the platelet and white blood cell is uh, settled above this and this structure this this component that you are seeing here that is the plasma getting it from this yellow color structure that you are seeing here this yellow color liquid that is the plasma so what is the color of plasma here it is <coughs> yellow in color okay na and this plasma what is it made up of it's 95% made up of water 95% made up of water now you'll be questioning like why are we able to distinguish it like this like this is part of the blood now the complete thing should be red in color but in the beginning what i said this sample of blood has been put into the centrifugation machine You guys understand the process of centrifugation. You know, like the churning of the milk is done to obtain uh, butter from it. It's based on centrifugation, the principle of centrifugation. In the chapter separation of substances, I think you guys would have learned about these things. Huh? In your uh, sixth standard, you would have learned about magnetic separation, hand picking, threshing, winnowing, uh, yes, paper chromatography, etc. so there you would have learned about centrifugation also where a fluid is spinned at a very high speed and the <laughs> because of the spinning the the components of the fluid <coughs> the components of the fluid have different densities so the one that is having a very low density will settle on the top and the ones that are having more density will but are will deposit at the bottom tell me you guys you guys tell me why the cream in the milk floats 
why the cream in the milk float and and why it does not settle at the bottom <clears throat> if you happen to visit the villages there you guys would have seen the village women how they will be churning the milk they will take a take a um, clay pot and they will take milk in this and they will put a wooden stick in this tie some thread like this and they will be rolling it Priyanka, I think you might have seen this. Yeah. So that is churning of the milk and that is based upon the principle of centrifugation. Getting back to my question, I was asking why the butter deposits on the top? Because butter is less denser as compared to milk. That's what I mean, not specifically butter, basically the cream here. It is less denser as compared to the milk. That's why it settles on the bottom. So this sample of blood it is also put into the centrifugation machine. It will be spinned at very at a very fast speed. It is spun, spinned. And thereby the different components will be separated. And that's why you are able to see this. But if you were to just take a sample of blood and it is not put into the centrifugation machine, will you be able to see the different colors? No, sir. Abu Bakr and Priyanka, you guys also tell me. Getting the concepts or just getting lost in what we are doing here? Sir, Abu, can you explain the... Which part? The making butter. Okay, okay. See, they are always saying now, whenever a liquid which has different components in this, in it, it is spun at a high speed. Okay. So what will happen? Like it's a normal thing you guys would have seen that many times uh, when you'll be drinking the milk now. Have you guys seen the um, uh, yellow bubbles in the milk, yellow fat particles floating in the milk? Yes, sir. No? No, sir. You guys haven't? Yes, sir. Okay. Particularly in the buffalo milk, lots of fat is present. So, several times, uh, what happens now? We see that uh, you guys would be actually consuming lots of packed milk, I think. Okay, no? You guys usually consume the packed milk, uh, packed milk, I suppose. Okay. With the pasteurized milk, basically. Or the toned milk. Anyways, what I'm saying that, sometimes we see that the fat particles will be floating on top of milk. Why it floats on top of milk? Because it is less denser. Its density is less. Why the oil floats on water? Oil floats on water because it is less denser as compared to water. That's why it floats on the water. Okay, now water is more denser in comparison to the uh, oil. And oil is less denser. That's why it will be floating on top of water. So similarly here, what happens when, like, um, when we'll be uh, mixing this fluid with, with, with uh, at a very high speed, when it is spun at a spin at a very high speed, so the less denser particles from this starts to separate and it starts to settle on the top. So similarly, when the blood is put into the centrifugation machine, it will be rotated very fast, and thereby the less denser particles in this will settle at the top. So plasma will settle on the top. After this, you'll be having the red uh, white blood cells and the platelets, and then you have the red blood cells. So that is how it can be separated. Basically, whenever we give, a, when we are sick and when the um, when the medical checkup of the blood is done, so thereby that blood also goes through the centrifugation machine and all the components are first separated out like this. After then only they will be studying. After then only they will be determining the uh, amount of red blood cells or amount of white blood cell, how much of it is present. You guys getting it what I'm trying to say so far? Yes, sir. Let's get back to the main thing here as we were learning about plasma. So we see that it's the liquid component which is made up of 95% of water. And the blood cells will be floating in this. And its natural color is yellow. It's a straw yellow colored viscous liquid which contributes about 55 to 60% of all the total blood in our body. Getting it now? This brings us to this... Uh, a normal question arises in the mind that how much of blood is present in a normal person's body? You guys sure. make a guess. Yes. 
ये सब ऊपर का सर फोर लीटर्स फोर लीटर्स सर व्हाट इज पैशन व्हाट इज सर व्हाट इज पैशनरेस मिल ओके व्हाट इज पैस्टराइजेशन मेथड ओके पैस्टराइजेशन इज ना is the method to preserve the food from getting contaminated it's a food preservation method in which the milk will be heated to about 70 degrees celsius for a few seconds and then it will be then quickly it will be cooled down so first it is heated and then it is freezed so while we are heating the milk maximum amount of bacteria present in the milk is killed to ensure 100% of the bacteria in the milk is killed it will be freezed it will be instantly freezed so that kills the remaining bacteria so that is what the pasteurization method is it was uh, invented by louis pasteur it was named after the person who invented this method that is louis pasteur so from pasteur the method came to be known as pasteurization yes sir bubagar sir that's why uh, milk from other The voice is stucking. Can you guys hear Abu Bakr properly, or is the issue with me only? Sorry, I can't. Okay. okay, Abu Bakr, get your network connection proper. Okay, I think he's having network issue again. so what we are saying here how, getting back to the question you are saying 4 liter about it's 4 and 1/2 liter okay now we, uh, generally it's about 4 and 1/2 liter also it varies in male and female it varies in male and female okay now so average amount of blood we say that it's about 5 liter of blood okay now in each male it will be like in a fully grown male it will be about 5 and 1/2 liter and in the case of female it is 4 and 1/2 liter so it varies from gender male has more blood as compared to the female but nonetheless we can take a average number right now that will be 5 liter of blood is there so out of the 5 liter of the blood in our body about 55 to 60% of total blood will be simply will be basically made up of plasma so if this person average blood volume is 5 liter so out of 5 liter out of 5 liter about 55 to 60% is plasma is plasma getting it guys what i meant to say so we can say about 2.5 a rough number we can take 2.5 to 2.8 liter of blood will be simply plasma isn't it so that is about 2.5 to 2.8 liter of blood is made up of plasma made up of plasma is this thing clear to everyone please let me know <coughs> yes, sir sir, uh, sir can you uh, sir can you explain the calculation of percentage again i forgot the formula Okay, okay. I have basically written a rough number, but nonetheless we can calculate it. So, fifty-five percent of five liter here. So, so fifty-five. When we'll be removing the percent in the denominator, hundred will be written, and off will be replaced replaced with multiplication, and it is five. Okay, now. So then we are going to can cancel out five twenties are this. So fifty-five upon twenty. so it will be simplified upon this so 11 upon 4 divide this and you'll be getting your answer right now so we can say 4 twos are 8 3 put the decimal here 4 sevens are 28 so roughly we are getting about 2.7 getting it guys now i have taken only 55 it's not exact percent of the uh, plasma it could be 56 57 58 59 or 60 right now so 2.7 so the, the number in between 2.5 to 2.8 understood this now okay sir 
that is one thing now coming back to another thing is that this plasma will contain water 90 95% of plasma is made up of water other things is mineral glucose protein and the clotting factor there are some substances present in the plasma that will help in clotting that is fibrinogen so the main contents of the plasma <coughs> is water mineral glucose protein and fibrinogen is that thing clear to all of you contains water mineral glucose protein and the clotting factor called as fibrinogen i suppose this much should be clear to everyone what is fibrinogen priyanka and goss sir it is the clotting factor it helps in clotting it is the clotting good okay so you guys main the components that are found in the plasma moments ago we have i have told you this or you can just take a look at this and i will uh, tr try to memorize some of the components and then i will be asking question <clears throat> Abu Bakr, uh, I think you are also having some network issue. Okay, I'm changing the slide now. Yes, tell me the components of the plasma. Water, minerals, glucose, proteins, fibrinogen. <laughs> Priyanka, you also. Yes. So what? Name the components present in the plasma. Yes. All of you turn your cameras on in the class. I don't know why you guys are so so much shy. Sir, if my if I on my internet is good. Yeah, uh, I understood. Like for you. Uh, there will be internet network issue. Yes. Okay. Let me repeat. We learned that water is present. Fifty-five percent of the plasma is made up, basically made up of water. Fifty-five percent of plasma is basically made up of water. Apart from that, we have mineral, protein, fibrinogen. And it also contains glucose in it. Getting it now? So these are the main components that are found in the plasma. Fibrinogen it helps in clotting. Now we are going to learn about the white blood cells. White blood cells it is also known by a common term by by another name of leukocytes. Leukocytes. So the white blood cells. They are present in our uh, um, in our uh, in our blood. They are, but they are present in very few uh, few amount. Their number is very few, about less than one person, or just about one person. But even if they are just present, even uh, if they just make up one percent of our blood, they have a very important function to perform. They will be fighting against the infections. They will be fighting against the germs present in the body. They will be fighting against the germs present in the body. Hence, improves our immune system. and they come in different shape and sizes these are some of the different types of white blood cells collectively all of them are being called as white blood cells you don't have to memorize the name just for uh, making you guys understand the concept in a detailed manner i have taken this image okay na okay go spring and booker these are different types of white blood cells namely monocyte eosinophil basophil lymphocytes neutrophil Many times you guys have would have heard of this. It's a common term, eosinophil. Have you heard? Have you heard of the eosinophil? No, no, sir. Like sometimes the eosinophil decreases in the blood. Like particularly, um, if there is some infection in the body, right now, or um, in certain situations, okay. the eosinophil eosinophil can decrease in the body and thereby the immune system will uh, uh, it will it will be degree, it will be a uh, weakening it weakens okay so a lower number of eosinophil will lead to certain uh, problems in the body and there could be several reasons for this okay many times if we are taking wrong medications 
so wrong medi- medications can also decrease the content uh, amount of eosinophil in our body etc but nonetheless these are the different types of white blood cells function of the white blood cell as i have said that they will be fighting against the germs present in the blood so they will be protecting you against all different kinds of illness and disease so you can think of them as the immunity cells or you can think of them as the as the warriors of the body who will be shielding you against the diseases so they are always at war they never stop functioning right and they are always functioning right because germs are always in our body we can never be free from the germs right now even now there are so many millions of germs in your body but why we are not getting ill it's because presence of the white blood cells they are continuously fighting off against those germs hence protecting our body so they will be fighting against what kind of pathogens disease causing organisms they will be fighting against the viruses against the bacteria and any other kind of foreign invaders that will endanger you endanger your health okay, now priyanka is gone it is important that everyone gets the network issue fixed uh kind of becomes interruption for them they miss on important concepts so hope it is clear to everyone any questions from this to anyone please let me know important point which i had to write here they are present in low amount about 1% okay keep playing guess here before we continue further you guys tell me what is the another name for white blood cell what's the another name we use for it i can give a hint it it starts from l yes it is lymphocytes okay na no? it is lymphocytes now white blood cells what is their function abu bakar was and prinka what is the function of white blood cell sir they fight off diseases fight off diseases very good they will be fighting off diseases very good okay na no? give way of mm-hmm. protects our body against illness against diseases where is the white blood cell or the red blood cell which you are going to study or the platelet where are they produce in the body so the bone marrow right it is in the bone marrow another component which you are going to study is the red blood cell in the beginning we have learned few basic things about this so they are present in ample amount in the blood ample means sufficient so they are present in ample amount in the blood about 40 to 45% of the blood is basically made up of the red blood cells and why they are red in color they are red in color because of a special pigment present in them called as hemoglobin called as hemoglobin so let me write some of the important functions of this red blood cells and then we are going to continue further <clears throat> so the first thing i say that these are these are present in ample amount how much about 40 to 45% of the blood is made up of the red blood cell it contains contains red blood cells the question is that why are they red so they are red because of a special pigment what is the name of the pigment in pigment hemoglobin that is hemoglobin hemoglobin in short we write this as capital h and a small p that is hemoglobin now <clears throat> talking about hemoglobin it has got some functions to perform particularly what the hemoglobin will do it will bind with the oxygen that we are breathing in the oxygen that we are breathing in so this hemoglobin will bind with that and it will be <coughs> Uh, helping in tra- uh, uh, transporting it to different cells in our body right so the oxygen that we take in so oxygen 
binds with hemoglobin hemoglobin and forms in case i'm, I'm audible to everyone no am i visible or not because there was some network issue from my side was well, am i visible and audible yes sir sir visible <clears throat> so i see that it is present in the ample amount it contains a special pigment in it called as a hemoglobin because of which it is red okay further another important thing to be learned about is that hemo oxygen binds with hemoglobin and forms oxy hemoglobin it forms oxy hemoglobin meaning that as we know that in the process of breathing how the breathing takes place the mechanism we already know about it they are alveoli present in our lungs now alveoli has a rich supply of blood blood capillaries are surrounding surrounding our alveoli you guys know about the alveoli right so that this is our lungs there is a branch like structure inside our lungs and at the end of this branch structure there are bulb like structures these bulb like structures they are called as alveoli these are alveoli and alveoli they have a rich supply of blood they have a rich supply of blood so basically blood capillaries are present in it blood capillaries you guys can recall about the blood capillaries no it is present in different parts of the body in the eye in the ear and in the alveoli also it is present in our gums also in some parts of the mouth also it is visible inside the mouth so the blood capillaries will be taking up the oxygen now it takes up the oxygen from the lungs and now this oxygen is going into the blood so in the blood what is happening here there is a pigment by the name of hemoglobin it is present here where is the hemoglobin present where is the hemoglobin present guys hemoglobin. it is present to be specific in the red blood cells it is present in the red blood cells it is present <clears throat> so hemoglobin there will be the oxygen that has entered into the blood that oxygen will be binding with the hemoglobin present in the red blood cells am i clear to everyone what i'm trying to say here <clears throat> oxygen binds with the hemoglobin hb in short it is hemoglobin after binding it results in formation of what forms the oxy hemoglobin is that thing clear to everyone what we have just learned here yes or no please let me know <clears throat> yes sir if anyone has any confusion in this please let me know i will be happy to explain this again no sir okay <clears throat> so this hemoglobin must have some affinity towards oxygen no so hemoglobin have affinity towards oxygen affinity basically attraction okay no affinity or you can say its ability to to bind with the oxygen right but there is a problem with hemoglobin hemoglobin have more affinity towards <clears throat> it has more affinity towards other gases like carbon monoxide it has more affinity you guys have heard of carbon monoxide gas many times you guys have heard of this news like in the winters particularly in villages or in anywhere else for example if someone is in a closely packed room the ventilation is very poor all of you turn your cameras on because you don't have any network issue so turn your camera on so in a closely packed room if there is no ventilation in the room if something is being burned and something is burning in inadequate supply of oxygen if something is burning and supply of oxygen is not proper so a poisonous gas called as carbon monoxide is formed <clears throat> getting my point so say there is a there is a packed room which has no ventilation no outlet for air to exit from this 
A or to A to enter into this. So there is no uh, exit or uh, inlet or outlet in this room. And if we had, are burning some wood in this, so the wood will not be burning in sufficient uh, supply of oxygen. So it will produce harmful gas by the name of carbon monoxide. So many times we get to hear the news, particularly in the winters, sometimes in some rural areas, people would be burning wood inside their house, burning coal inside their house. And the next morning, they never woke up. The next morning, they never woke up. Have you guys heard of such news? <clears throat> yes, sir. So there what happened? This carbon monoxide instead of oxygen, carbon monoxide attached with the hemoglobin and it led to the death of the person. The person became unconscious and never woke again. So the thing is that the hemoglobin has got higher attraction towards carbon monoxide apart from oxygen. Right now, it is said to it is it is said that <clears throat> it is estimated that it has got 200 times more attraction, 200 times more affinity towards carbon monoxide as compared to the oxygen. So this is how it leads to the death of the per, death, death of the person. So important point which I'm going to write down here: <clears throat> hemoglobin has 200 times more affinity. What does affinity mean here? Attraction. Exactly. Towards carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide, isn't it a poisonous gas? Yes, Priyanka? Yes. This, this is poisonous. <laughs> so that is... So this is something which we learned in relation to the red blood cells. Okay. So that is how uh, this oxygen will bind with the bind itself with hemoglobin, and it will reach every cell of the body through the blood. It will reach every cell of the body. So that is all the uh, all the important thing about the red blood cells. Okay. If there's any question in this, please let me know. There is one thing which is missing here. Uh, we learned about the other name for white blood cells and for this red blood cell it is called as erythrocytes the another term which we use for this is the erythrocytes okay so they are present it's the most common type of cell that is present in our body and it will be mainly helping in transport of oxygen as we have done okay and where will this be produced it will again be produced in the <coughs> in the same place where other components are um, produced in the bone marrow. Okay, now that is one thing. Now, you guys pay attention to the shape of this red blood cell. When you look at the shape of the red blood cells, it is biconcave shape. You guys understand what is biconcave shape? Or no? Uh, with the help of an animation, I guess I will be able to tell you what exactly I mean. I guess there should be a 3D model for this. Let me check. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the biconcave shape. See. Look at this one over here. And look at this image here. Both of them are the same over here, basically. Can you guys look at the image which I have selected here? Yes, sir. How it is bent inward from both the sides? From both the sides, it is bent inward now? Yes, so sir. Same is the structure of the red blood cells also. 
that too is also bent from both the shapes in the inward sides. You guys know about the concave and the convex mirrors, right? Concave mirrors, they are bent inward. Reflecting surface is bent inward. So that is the shape of this red blood cell. So important point to be noted down, that shape of the red blood cell is bi-concave. Bi means two now. So from both the two sides, from both the sides, it is concave in shape. Okay. Now you guys tell me what is the other name for red versus how is it also known as? Sir, uh, erythrocytes, I think. Okay. What about others? Is it true? Abu Bakr and Prenka? Yes? Yes, sir. Good. So, so far, several things which we have done. An important thing about the red blood cell is that it lacks nucleus. The, the red blood cell, uniquely, it lacks nucleus. Okay, now, the majority of the cell in our body, they have nucleus now. But this red blood cells are unique in this sense that they lack a nucleus. Got this now? <clears throat> and also, it is it proves to be advantageous for the cell. How it proves advantages, we are not going there, there, but it does not have a nucleus in this. So another important thing which I am saying here, let me write this over here. It lacks nucleus. So actually it is advantages now, like in the sense it allows more space for the hemoglobin to exist and to, uh, to bind with oxygen. Okay, it makes room for the hemoglobin to exist in this. All right now. Answer the next question, all if you read the question carefully and then answer this question. Sir, A and B are correct. Sir, all of the above? Yes. All of them are correct. All of yeah. the above. Okay. Read the third statement. RBCs lack nucleus now. Something we should learn moments ago. It lacks nucleus. Right, Goss? Yes, sir. Yeah, it lacks nucleus now. So all of them are correct here. Okay, so that's it for today. In the next class, we'll be learning about the blood platelets. And uh, we will learn how it will help in clotting. Like, just now you can observe one common thing here. Whenever there's a wound or cut in our skin, the blood is oozing out from the wound. The blood is coming out of it. And now see how these tiny structures, these white tiny structures have clumped together with the red blood cells and the dead skin cells to form a clot. And okay, now the blood flow will be prevented. The, leak, uh, the blood will not flow from this anymore. Okay, no? So we'll be continuing from here in the next class. And uh, further, we'll be learning about arteries, valves, veins, etc. So there are so many things left to be done in the chapter. We shall be continuing from next class. Do you guys have any questions? Yes, okay, then. Also, uh, Priyanka and Abu Bakr, I would recommend to please get to the network issue resort. Okay. And Abu Bakr, with you, I have observed that uh, like uh, for, for many, many months, like there has been an audio issue. Like, uh, like for example, as I, I speak, is my voice clear to everyone? Do you guys find my voice clear? Or does it yes. stuck sometimes? It is clear. So like the reason why if I were to speak without this, if I were to speak without this headphone, you won't be able to understand the my words properly. Okay, no? So use any kind of proper headphone that should have that should have a microphone in it so that i also uh, would be able to hear your voice